and welcome back to Football Made Simple. The FA Cup would take centre stage on Saturday in a fascinating encounter between two London rivals in Frank Lampard's Chelsea and Mikel Arteta's Arsenal. Lampard would love the FA Cup to top off a great first season whilst Arteta would want to win not only for the silverware in his first season but to get into the Europa League as well. But tactically what could happen between these two teams? In this video we take a look. Lampard and Arteta have clashed twice before, with Lampard coming out on top in their first match whilst the second match was a draw. However, Arteta was extremely early on in his career and his tactics have evolved since then so it's hard to look too deeply into those matches. So we'll instead look at what tactics they've recently used. In the last three matches, Chelsea have favoured a back three and may look to do the same in this final. Arsenal in their last match used a 4-2-3-1, however, in the two matches before that they also preferred a three-man defence. Let's first take a look at the potential tactics that could come to fruition when Chelsea have the ball. The first thing to note is that on the occasions where Chelsea don't try to build up short, they have no problems with being more direct, whether they use Giroud or Tammy Abraham who are both good in the air. This could be particularly important if Tierney plays as one of the centre backs as he is not the greatest in the air, only winning 0.6 aerials per game at a rate of just 38%. This could allow the forward to pull onto him allowing Chelsea to flick on the ball or knock it down to one of the other forwards to begin a second phase. Of course, at times Chelsea will look to play short. When they played Liverpool and United recently, both these teams used back four formations, so Chelsea had easy outlets throughout the match with quick switches to the wing backs who were consistently in space. However, with Arsenal likely using a back three formation as well, their wing backs would be able to cut this off easily, so Chelsea may have to find alternative ways to play out. When the centre backs have the ball, a lot would depend on how Arsenal use their front three. We have seen matches where Lacazette has functioned more as a false nine with Pepe and Aubameyang ahead of him. And we've also seen Pepe form a hybrid central midfielder allowing the two forwards ahead of him. This would make Chelsea's wide centre backs crucial in carrying out the ball to even things up in midfield, allowing them to progress. But if Arsenal choose to defend with a flat front three, this could lead to some problems for them. Although being man to man here would help the press and could be good to try and win the ball high up. But if Chelsea gets the ball into midfield, there would be a 2 vs 2. This could be one of the key regions in this match, especially if Chelsea can isolate Kovacic against Xhaka. Kovacic's mobility and dribbling ability means that there is a chance he could dribble past his man and get into this region unmarked and then look to create, so Arsenal will have to look out for this. This could be exacerbated if Mason Mount starts. Mount has been in good form recently and he is comfortable moving deep from the wide areas and could help Chelsea have the midfield overload against Arsenal and keep the possession in these deeper regions. So this may be why Arsenal may want to use Lacazette in midfield or generally sit deeper to prevent possession in these areas. Another area that Chelsea could look to exploit is the left hand side. This is particularly applicable if Aubameyang starts as Arsenal's left winger. This is because although at times he does drop deep when defending, either through tactical choice or the player's own profile, we see him stay high often ready for the break. Chelsea can take advantage of this with James pushing high alongside Willian or whoever the winger is to try and overload Arsenal's wing back in these situations. In prior matches we have also seen Willian tuck in to ensure that the wide centre back can't come out to help the wing back and Aspilicueta can push high up and this will create a 3 vs 2 out in the wide regions and the opportunity to look for crosses into their target man. Alternatively, this could mean that Chelsea are vulnerable to the break on their right hand side, with Lacazette dropping deep to create and Aubameyang using his blistering pace. But what could we see from Arsenal in response? Again, we could see a reversion to the back 3, having used the 4-2-3-1 on the final day against Watford and it may look like this. Again, like Chelsea, when they played City in the semi-final, their major build-up success exemplified in their first goal was predicated by having a spare man in the wide regions. But with Arsenal also having wing-backs, Chelsea may have to find alternatives. They don't have as effective a target man as Chelsea, so going long might not be efficient unless they're looking to get Aubameyang in behind. So they may have to use the centre more often. But when they get the ball here, 
Chelsea to reaction will be interesting, as if they press high, they could have success forcing Arsenal long and will probably win the aerial duel. Lacazette could be crucial for Arsenal when dropping into the midfield to give them the man advantage here. Against Liverpool, we saw that Zuma was willing to follow Firmino into these deep regions, but this opens up space where Pepe and Aubameyang, if they are at the best, could look to take advantage. An outside shout is Arteta reverting to an early tactic of his, which is the inverted fullback. This could be particularly effective if Maitland-Niles starts at wingback. He would be comfortable moving in here to create the 3 vs 2, whilst Pepe can push wide to draw the wing back, allowing Lacazette and Aubameyang to be much more central and look to get on the ball. But if they do choose to go wide, they could look to make the most of their left hand side. Arsenal could look to shift the ball to the right and overload it, dragging Chelsea across. Crucially, Tierney like Aspilicueta on the opposite side is happy to move into the full back role, and particularly if Saka is the left wing back, he can then move up to function as the winger, and Tierney will help him to overload and subsequently look for crosses into good regions or Lacazette dropping deeper to create. For Chelsea, the key players could be Mount, Kovacic and Aspilicueta. Mount dropping deep into midfield or pushing in behind the wingbacks could be vital, whilst Kovacic and his progressive dribbles could try and break Arsenal's midfield line wide open. Aspilicueta will have big decisions to make, whether to stay deep to compensate for Aubameyang or bomb forward on the overload. For Arsenal, Lacazette would be crucial in helping to link up the play in midfield and the forwards ahead of him. And Ceballos will have to be both disciplined to ensure that Xhaka isn't overloaded in midfield whilst providing the creative thrust. And with regards to the predictions, I would love to know in the comments down below how you think the match will play out. And in the final bit of news, the Patreon is now live for those of you who would love to help to support the channel and get rewards like exclusive videos, voting in polls, and early access to videos such as Atlanta's tactics, Mourinho's Madrid tactics, and a tactical preview of City vs Madrid, all available now. I'd love it if you consider supporting at patreon.com forward slash football made simple. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.